What's up YouTube? So welcome to the next installment on how to render a house using sand and cement. Now we obviously need to mix up the render. So that's what this video is going to be about. How to mix up a nice gauge of sand and cement. Now straight away there are two ways of mixing up sand and cement. The first way uh, is using a, a cement mixer, you know the big uh, orange drum that you often see um, and by far and away that probably gives you the best quality mix and the reason being is that sand and cement prefers to be mixed in a folding motion. That's how it tends to mix best. Is that how we're going to do it? No, it is not. Our preferred method is actually to use a uh, is to use a, a plastering paddle mixer. We do have a cement mixer. But there is a very good reason why we don't often use the cement mixer. First reason being is typically it tends to be much, much dirtier. Uh, usually it tends to overfill itself and, and spit out of the uh, front of the cement mixer. But probably the biggest reason being is because usually when we are mixing up, we mix up double gauges. Um, so typically, uh, when it comes to standard brick, in our opinion, the best gauge for a standard house brick is four sand on the scratch coat. Four sand, one cement. Uh, you will get some that say uh, three sand to one cement. In our opinion, that's just a bit, a bit too hard. It's unnecessary uh, amount of cement to uh, the sand. So when we say a double gauge, what it means is that we're gonna do eight sand and two cement at the same time. What it means is that you're knocking up twice as fast. So if you're doing whole flanks, a how, uh, whole sides of a house and you're mixing up by hand, you're obviously mixing up half the amount of time. So generally it's just a bit quicker. So obviously a cement mixer will give you a better mix. However, we have a very large paddle. I think ours is 230 millimeters, something like that. 230 mil Rafina paddle mixer. It knocks up sand and cement very, very well. So just to put that out there, really you should use a cement mixer, but we're not going to. So on to the gauge. Um, now the gauge, uh, when we say that, it's referring to how much sand and cement we use in a mix. Now it's well reported on, on YouTube that your scratch coat needs to be stronger than your top coat. As you go out, so as you add more coats, it has to get weaker. If you didn't, it would have something called an egg shelling effect, where the outside of it was harder than the house itself, it will crack and it will crack badly. So as we've already mentioned, this is a standard house brick as such. Our go-to gauge is four sand to one cement. If you used a thermalite block, which is very, very light, we would not recommend rendering on this, but occasionally you have to, you would need to be looking at somewhere between six and seven sand to one cement. And that's just on the scratch coat. But for this first coat here, it will be four sand, one cement. On the top coat, which we will review at a later day, it will be five sand, one cement, and then one, or sorry, half a lime. So half a bucket of lime. So what we're gonna do is just gonna gauge this out now. Now what we will say is um, with render, it's very important to get the gauges as close to the same as possible. As such, we always gauge our sand out with buckets. Uh, it's the easiest way to get the most consistent uh, color. So as such, we do a level bucket of sand and we will do eight of those in one bath and we will do an entire bag of cement because generally, um, about a black bucket full of cement is a, just under half uh, a bag of cement. So a whole bag of cement is roughly two buckets, um, is, is roughly about two buckets. So it's just an easy way to gauge it. So it will be eight sand to one entire bag of cement. So we're going to do that now. Just one other thing when it comes to uh, mixing up and that is the additives that we use in the water. So you will no doubt know that you have to put waterproof in the scratch coat. Never in the top coat, it's in the scratch coat. The reason being is because the waterproofer slows the suction down on the top coat. So if you put no waterproofer in your scratch coat, your render will go off really quick when you're applying the top coat. So scratch coat needs the waterproofer. Now, there are loads of waterproofers. We have tried 
many, many waterproofers from many brands. You know, we've tried the Optimix, we've tried Seeker One, the Seeker Proof, uh, the Everbuild ones, etc. There is only one for us, in our opinion, which stands well above the others. And the good news is, it is not particularly expensive. The one we use is this one down here. This here is Feb Proof Plus. Uh, not in any way sponsored by Feb at all, but this, in our opinion, is the best waterproof to buy. It's incredible. I, th I think it's maybe £12 a tub, if that. I think if you buy the f uh, 25 litre ones, it's about 35 quid. It's, n it's not a lot of money. Really, you should gauge this out. Are we going to? No. Why? Um, because we've done this for a long time, we know what we're doing. And to be fair, we just know like three chugs of waterproofer is about right. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, the only other thing that you want to add to your uh, water when mixing up is SBR. So, and this is only on your first coat. You wanna add SBR with the waterproofer. Why? Because it, it just, it makes it an awful lot stickier, it makes it a lot easier to apply, and it generally, um, it helps against that cracking uh, when you put the top coat on. It just slows that um, drying process when you're applying the top coat. So in our water, it will be a decent amount of waterproofer and a small amount of SBR. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how we knock that up now. Okay, so when it comes to the water, obviously always use clean water. And again, we are gauging it in buckets. So what we're gonna do, use the FebProof Plus, And I say, it does tell you the amount that you should use per 25 kilos of uh, cement. We've been doing this for a long time, so I'm not gonna do that. We're just gonna chug it um, and just put a decent amount in. The reality is you can't really have too much waterproofer in our opinion. Um, especially on a hot sunny day. You can clearly see as the saturation on the camera is terrible that it is a very sunny day. And then you've got SBR. Now typically um, you'll often find in merchants SBR will actually come in sizes this big but because we use so much of this we buy the 25 litre drums and then you just want a little bit of SBR. Not a lot. And then just mix that through, like so. Now, because we are going to be doing a double gauge, because we're gonna be doing a double gauge, we are going to put two buckets of water into the bath before we add any sand. So we will catch up once that's done. Now, when it comes to the sand, as we've mentioned, it's four sand on the scratch coat. So what we're gonna do is we always gauge them in black buckets, pretty much level to the top. If you do it level, you know it's gonna be the same every single time. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put four of these straight into the water straight away. So, <clears throat> What we'll do is we'll catch up once that's done, but before any cement, four sand straight away. So that is half the gauge straight away. One other thing when it comes to the sand. So the sand you use is called plastering sand. Let me change the angle so I'm not so blown out. There you go. Hello camera. So um, the sand that we use is plastering sand. Now there, uh, not all plastering sand is equal to be perfectly honest with you. And the plastering sand that we pretty much always use without exception is called sand gate. It is a very fine, very ready orange sand. Um, usually we buy it from a, a builder's merchant called Parker's. Um, if you go to somewhere like Wix or B&Q's and buy plastering sand from there, you will find it has little stones in it, and that is horrible to use when you're floating up. It's not such a big deal for the scratch coat, but for the top coat, it's horrible. So we thoroughly recommend, gold standard is Sandgate plastering sand. Um, you do get some that say about putting um, a bucket of sharp, uh, sharp sand in the uh, scratch coat. I'll be honest with you, we don't do that. I've, 
I, I don't really know why anyone would want to do that to be perfectly honest with you but you can if you want but it's certainly not something that we do so we just use four plastering sand and the sand we use is sand gate so what we'll do is we'll catch up once we've got those four buckets in okay so we've now got the sand in the bath what we're going to do is we're just going to spin that up um, just to run the water through the sand now what we're going to do is now that's mixed through we are going to add the cement now uh, for, for those that are wondering about the uh, dewalt mixer um whether it's gutless or not um this thing is amazing going to be honest anyone that says that they don't know what they're talking about i think this year alone we've done something like 70 tons of sand uh with that paddle mixer rendering this thing is an absolute beast. So if you have any doubts as to whether or not this can cope with it or whether it's powerful enough, I can assure you it is. Um, probably most of the render that we mix up, we do using that mixer, it is incredible. A couple of things to remember with the cement. Um, one, it is really not good for your skin. So uh, if you get any cement on you, you want to wash it off straight away. Secondly, really, it's, it's not nice to breathe in as well. So um, don't do as we do, but rather as we say, um, and you probably should wear a mask. Uh, fortunately, there is quite a draft that goes down here. So it is blowing the dust away, but it is good practice to wear a mask. But what we're going to do now is we're going to mix that cement through with the four sand. While we do that, Louis is going to get the other four sand and we'll add that after I've mixed this first section up. Okay, so the render is now completely uh, mixed up. It's uh, pretty boring to be honest watching you. So we just did it off camera, or at least uh, Louis did. But if you were to have a look at it now, uh, you can see, so it took about five minutes or so and the render is knocked out. Now, obviously uh, it'll be very dark because there is no uh, lime uh, lime and it's a very dark sort of greeny gray color okay so if you can believe it we've actually gone uh, quite a bit further forward in time uh, we're about a week and a half later and we have pretty much uh, finished this job we have one more wall to top coat it's the front of the house now we're obviously going to be doing the gauge for the top coat can you believe that i remembered to record the video now we said we would discuss the difference uh, in the uh, top coat. Now you remember for the scratch, because this is on brickwork, we used four sand um, to, uh, so it's four buckets of sand to one bucket of cement. And then we used SBR and Feb proof. The second uh, coat, the top coat is completely different in that what we're gonna do is we're gonna use five sand, uh, five buckets of sand to one bucket of cement or is because we do double gauge as we've mentioned we put just an entire bag of cement all in one go it works out roughly about uh, two buckets but we're not going to put SBR in and we're not going to put Feb proof in in fact we're going to use a product that um, Blaine Gray has mentioned many times on his channel it is in our opinion the best additive to use for the top coat and it is this one here Rendermix um, now this essentially is a waterproofer and a plasticizer. That said, we would not recommend using this as a waterproofer uh, for your scratch coat. The long and the short of it, it just isn't that great. It's okay, but not for the scratch coat in our opinion. It just won't give you enough time to do all you need to do, uh, ruling off, floating up um, on, a, on when you're doing your top coat, especially if it's a sunny day. Stick to the Feb proof in our opinion. It's a much better waterproofer. It's got the added benefit of there's a waterproofer in this. So in a way the customer's getting a better job. But the reason why this is so nice is that it, it makes the render workable for a lot longer. So even if it pulls in, a bit of sand in my eye, that doesn't feel nice. Um, even if it pulls in and dries quite a bit, you can just wet the wall down a bit. Uh, give it a light haze or just flick a bit of water with a brush and it will come back to life um, and it won't leave those horrible burn marks um, on the render so render mix is well worth it. it's not particularly expensive maybe 10 or 12 pound for a five liter it isn't dear uh, and it's quite easy to come by um, even if you just buy it online but what we're going to do is we've got to put quite a, a generous amount in I will tip the camera down hopefully so you can see the bucket over there now this is 
render mix, but it's, as you can see, it's a slightly old tub. The label's missing, but you can clearly see it says render mix there. But we're gonna use this one up first. Now, it does tell you how much to use per literage, I think. Um, we're not gonna gauge it out. Um, we've done this a long time, so we know roughly how much to use. Um, and I think as we've said already, in our opinion, with these additives, you can't really have too much. Um, we don't think, but I, I think it says something like, I don't even know why I'm looking at that label, it's so worn off. Um, I forget exactly what it is. I think in one of Blaine's videos, he mentions how much to use. Um, but generally we just do like three chugs uh, and that works out about enough. Now, because we are doing a double gauge, as we've mentioned about a million times, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do two buckets worth of water. We put that in straight away before anything. And what that means is it just means you don't get dry clumps of sand at the bottom of the bath. So we will catch up when we're putting the sand in. Okay, so the same as the scratch coat, we've mentioned this before, uh, we are gauging the sand out using these black buckets. They're as, pretty much as level as, as they get, you know, within reason. Um, the reason why it's important, and we've said this, is very, very important for the top coat. If you measure out in black buckets, you know the gauges are always going to be extremely close. Why does that matter? because if you have to mix up multiple gauges, for instance, the side of the house, I think was, uh, I think it was uh, two double gauges and one single gauge. Um, the fact that we were mixing up in black buckets means that there was no differentiation in the color of the render as you're putting it on. Um, if you added a little bit too much sand, a little bit too much cement, something like that, what you actually find is when it dries, you actually can see where the, the gauges are. Now, in the grand scheme of things, if they're painting it, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't look great, and it's not something that in reality you want to be taking a photo of, because it, you know, it's pretty evident that you messed up the gauge. So, really pay attention. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing this, it's so easy to add a bucket of sand when you shouldn't have, or, You've not put one in, so really pay attention to how much sand. So we're gonna put the five sand in now straight away. So I'll catch up once I've done that. Okay, so whew, it's a lot harder when you're doing it on your own, unfortunately. So let's have the five sand. Uh, put in and then what we're going to do is all you you just want to mix this through it's got two buckets of water in so it's obviously going to be soaking wet um, that's really what you want because it just makes it a little bit easier to mix up and then uh, same as before uh, add the entire bag of cement So the lime that you use is hydrated, uh, hydrated lime. It comes in 25 kilo bags. And unlike the cement and the sand where you gauge them in whole buckets, it's only for a single gauge, it's half a bucket of lime. So obviously because we are doing a double gauge, it would be an entire bucket's worth of lime. So then what we're gonna do is we are just going to pour the entire contents on there like so. Okay, so if you were look, to look at that now, it looks uh, very, very sloppy. You obviously would not render like this, you can drink it up with a straw. Uh, so what we're now gonna do is we're gonna add the other uh, five buckets of sand. Um, what I also did while I was mixing up is I also used the shovel just to scrape out the sides, really pull that uh, sand out from the bottom. So that first bit's all nicely mixed in, so you haven't got any loose bits of sand there that isn't, um, isn't bonded with any cement. Um, so it makes an awful lot easier when the gauge is wet. So what we'll do now is we're gonna add those extra five sand. Okay, so 
Uh, this uh, renderer is now being mixed up. It's got its uh, five extra sand. You can see that the bath is pretty much rimmed. You wouldn't want to go much more than uh, a double gauge of, uh, you wouldn't want to go much more than a double gauge of five sand uh, putting this in, but uh, you can see that come out nice. Keep those sides nice and clean. Very important when you're doing this, just to make sure you scrape out the sides. Um, now, I do generally tend to prefer to mix the, uh, the top coat up just a little bit wetter. Um, the reason being is that I actually find that sometimes it's easier to just put a tight coat over the scratch coat initially and then just go over it again after about five minutes or so. Um, so I find it's just, it, for me, it's just a little bit easier because you're not really trying to build out anymore. You've already done that on the scratch coat. Uh, generally on sand and cement, and certainly with these 15 mil beads, they have a six to seven mil uh, depth marker on the bead. So we're only looking to put it between uh, five and seven millimeters on that top coat. Um, so there's no need to have it uh, massively uh, stiff. Just makes life an awful lot harder. It actually makes the product uh, harder to apply to the wall, heavier on your elbow, your wrist, and it's heavier on the hawk as well. So generally we prefer knock it up a little bit wetter. Um, but that really is it. That is the two gauges uh, for the scratch coat and the top coat. As we've already said um, in the video, what we'll do is we'll put the, uh, the gauges and the additives in the description of the video so you can refer back to that at a later date. Um, but really now, uh, all that is left for us to do is to start applying the render. So in our next video, we will be looking at how to apply the scratch coat. We thank you so much uh, for watching this series. We hope you enjoy it. Possibly give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks again.